Hi everybody, my name is Kayla McLean. I'm an alumni engagement officer with Valparaiso University. Today I'm with alumnus Nate Biancardi. Nate is a 2018 graduate of Valparaiso University with his degree in art. Today he's going to be showing us how to do a drawing of the chapel. So today we are in Nate's studio and this is Nate. Hey everybody, how's it going? So let's get to know Nate a little bit. Why did you pursue art at Valparaiso University? Well, being a Valpo resident, VU offered a wonderful experience in the art world. Their art department is fantastic. They helped get me an internship at the uh, Brower Museum of Art, which is amazing. Loved it there. And also I was able to um, get a fellowship at, through the Brower and all that, the Gulick Fellowship to study Japanese art in Washington, D.C. in the year 2017. And that was a wonderful experience. You know, I've never been to D.C. as an adult before. <laughs> and it was just eye-opening. And my senses were just overwhelmed by the splendor of the art world and also of our nation's capital. Awesome. Let's take a look around. This is my habitat, my artistic habitat. If you look over here, you see the area of my studio where we conduct art workshops and art lessons and also where a lot of my overflowing artwork is. As you can see over here, we have some animal paintings and even famous faces like the wonderful and the iconic Obi-Wan Kenobi. I mean, can you not get any better than that? There he An is. An art studio. And even over here, we have a hidden figure of George Lucas right over here, surrounded by gnomes. And right next to George Lucas is even an oil painting of Jesus. A lot of people have confused him with Vlad the Impaler. It is not. It is actually Jesus. Some great talent, Nate. And the wonderful thing about having your own workspace and studio is that you can make it as crazy and as wild as you want. And right and speaking of wild, we have the tiger. Virgil. His name is Virgil. Why is his name Virgil? Because somebody thought of his name while they were here. Okay. So why not? And even some of my paintings from VU, from my senior thesis class, are hanging up here. So I have my memento from VU's wonderful art experience that helped me become a much better artist today. Such as a seal with a big pink donut. Is that not the most it's amazing. amazing, crazy thing you've ever seen? So Nate, why did you decide to open up a studio? I decided, well, to begin with, it was a graduation present. My parents are that amazing. They're so supportive with my artistic uh, endeavors that I was able to move down the hallway into a smaller studio at first. And then, just last year, we moved into this larger space so that way I could teach classes and also have enough room to work on my own artwork as well. That's awesome. And also, we want to um, open a non-for-profit um, art organization that's open to everybody in the community, like at Hilltop, and also with uh, seniors. We want to keep everything nice and open, so that way everybody in this community can enjoy art and also support the arts as well. We've also hosted a photography uh, show by a VU student, um, Amanda Dionoshantis, and she is a wonderful photographer, and she was recommended this place by Amy Tomasek, head of the art department, a wonderful woman. It is because of Amy that I am able to work with amazing clients. So Amy Tomasek, I want to say personally, you are the best. You are amazing. Keep doing what you're doing and stay at VU forever. It's going to be a simple drawing today, but we're going to make it a lot of fun. So the first thing you should have is a sheet of paper, landscape style. And then 
you want to make sure that it's nice and flush against the uh, drawing board or the drawing table or wherever you're drawing because if you have it crooked then everything is going to be crooked. So then we're going to take a straight edge or a ruler and the first thing I'm going to do is create a line at the bottom. Now a lot of artists do the, uh, horizon the uh, horizontal line as to create like a horizon line and all that but today we're just going to do like a line right across and all that because fortunately I was able to do this earlier and I was able to do it without any vanishing points. So you find all these little tricks and then you're able to make stuff work in art so that's a plus side. And then we're going to let's see we're going to create another line at the top right above this line because this is where the uh, Helgi center is going to be. And we're doing this with Sharpie. You can also do this with pencil and you also want to make sure your straight edge is nice and sturdy otherwise it'll move. But if you make a mistake just make it work. And then we're going to draw the um, chapel itself. And the chapel, we're going to start like mm, roughly about two inches away from the side of the paper. Then I would say we're going to go to about the middle just to create just a little line right there. And again, this is just going to be a quick drawing so that way we have the basic elements the Helgi Center, the chapel, and also the uh, church in the background. And then let's see, I'm going to draw. A vertical line down here and then vertical line over here and we're going to be making a lot of adjustments all throughout this drawing so that way it's perfect or as perfect as we can make it and then we're going to draw a rectangular line or rectangular, <laughs> a, a horizontal line across so that way we can create the back of the church. And then I think we're going to make the uh, triangular s rooftop, if that's what it's called. Kayla, do you know what I the think, type yeah, of I think rooftop works? <laughs> I think triangular rooftop. <laughs> So I'm going to start with a slanted line, kind of like this, and then we're going to have, let's see, then we're going to have roughly another line, kind of, it's going to be kind of like a zigzag triangle sort of line that we're going to be creating from this. And we have to also keep in mind that there's going to be like four sections of the chapel itself. So we just want to make sure that everything fits. And also we're going to divide the chapel with like the different um, sections of the walls and all that. So we're going to draw a vertical line down the middle and a little bit over so it kind of looks like a little band right there and then from there I'm gonna create another section of the roof here and right 
here. And it kind of looks like an abstract bird, like a little paper bird. It does. And it's like, this will be like a series of like origami paper birds. I think that's pretty awesome of how abstract the roof can be. Don't you think? Yeah. I agree. Hmm. And then we're going to draw another like triangular line, creating another spike on the roof. <laughs> And then we're all, I'm also noticing that there's another divisionary line right there that creates the section of the chapel. And I'm going to draw another vertical line going down a bit. And again, you're always going to find that you need to make adjustments here and there. We're going to make this look awesome. And then this line is going to be erased <laughs> and fixed up. Also notice that another part of the roof is kind of sticking out so we're gonna make a very skinny triangle coming out like that so this is what we have so far and it's definitely looking like the chapel guys oh good then I'm doing a good job <laughs> awesome Kayla says that it looks like the chapel, then it looks like the chapel. Who are we to dispute, right? Exactly. <laughs> and then we're also I'm also kind of looking at like um, the stained glass window. So we're going to draw a line going through mm, about the center of each section. Because also it's like with the roof, we have to draw the underside of the triangular roofs. And then we're going to, let's see, draw even more diagonal lines. So it's gonna, let's see, you just have to make sure that you keep everything nice and as straight as you can. Another band for the outside wall. And then we're gonna make another band right here. Then I think we can start making the stained glass section. So you want to keep, there's about one, two, three, four visible sections of the stained glass. So I'm going to make a series of rhombuses. And what is a rhombus, Nate? <laughs> a rhombus, it is a square where it's like both sides are parallel. So it kind of looks like this. So see how it's like two parallel lines are going that way and then two parallel lines are going that way? Got it. That's a rhombus. Okay. Have you ever heard of rhombus before? <laughs> in algebra in like eighth grade. <laughs> this is why I did not major in math. <laughs> did you major in any math classes? <laughs> no, definitely not. Oh good, I thought it was just me. <laughs> And then we're going to create like another, as I said, it's going to be about four sections of the stained glass, at least on this plane. Because sometimes if you want to 
Nah, it's always best to use the ruler. Better safe than sorry. And you just keep finding that you always have to keep making adjustments. And then once I get to the fourth section, I'm starting to see like the roof of the uh, Helgi Center. Because we have to have a roof for the Helgi Center, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like a cube is what we're starting off with. So we're gonna start making a little line kind of past, that's gonna go past the chapel. So we're gonna have a little, line if you can see it in the series of lines kind of right there and then we're going to make kind of a diagonal line and then we're going to make another line going up like this then we're going to have a line going off to the side Then I'm going to erase all the little lines on the inside. And then I'm starting to think that maybe I need to bring the back of the church out a little bit more. So I think I'll erase this line and push it out a bit. Then I'm going to bring a line right here. Then let's see. Then I find that I need to adjust the roof a little bit more. And make it point upright more. again like this erase erase <laughs> and make another triangular shape right here and then we're going to make a line going right down like this. Let's see. And then I can even make the diagonal lines, which are very most important in this chapel. They look awesome. on the back of the chapel. When you're done with all the diagonals, can we see what it looks like? Yeah, absolutely. And then this is what it, the chapel looks like. It's like definitely looking like the chapel. chapel. Yeah, that's, that's so the, good. I'm capturing the chapel's essence. If not, it's technicality. <laughs> oh, it's pretty technical to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good.
confidence booster. <laughs> now we're going to make the windows on the side of the church or the chapel. It's where the windows are, so we're just making a series of rectangles every, I'd say, half inch. And we're just going to make it straight across. We're not going to do the uh, diagonal zigzags on top of the roof and all that. So we're just going to make a series of like about half inch rectangles. Because we're going to make this really deep, nice and colorful later on in. And also, you just have to keep reminding yourself to keep the lines nice and straight. Just go back and give that a quick fix. Do you draw, Kayla? Um, I would not say that I am artistically inclined. Yeah. Do you like to doodle every so often? I do. Yeah, mine don't turn out nearly as realistic as yours is <laughs> by any means. It's all right. It's a nice relaxation activity, wouldn't you say? Oh, I definitely agree. And you said you've been doing art classes for seniors, is that correct? Art classes for um, kids right now. I'm doing online virtual classes for the kids here, and they are amazing. They are just so into learning art and all that. I had a girl who painted the rose from Beauty and the Beast as a present for her cousin. Oh, wow. Then I had a boy who is um, who drew uh, Chewbacca. Then I had another little girl who painted a wood slice painting of Zazu from The Lion King. <laughs> I mean, these kids are just creative. Oh, there's so many wonderful examples. And a couple of them, let's see, their parents work at VU. So oh, nice. there you go. Mm. Again, thanks to Amy Thomas, that <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful lady. I hope I made it clear. She's wonderful. <laughs> And then, let's see, now I'm looking at this and let's see, now we can start adding like the bottom part of the Helgi Center. And I'm just going to make the little roof. Actually, it's not so little, but it's a pretty skinny roof. Let's give it that. <laughs> And then we're going to make the little uh, beams that hold up the roof. But I also do paint with seniors sometimes and all that. It's just been really difficult with, uh, you know, we don't have to say it. We know. We all know. And it could be a little bit straighter. going to be perfect, but at least you'll be able to get the idea. And 
then let's see, this is what we got so far. And then we're going to start inking everything in. So we can do this a couple ways. Either we can use a straight edge with the Sharpie or if you want to try and freehand it, make it nice and sketchy. We don't have to be, make it so straight, do we? No. I don't think so. No, absolutely not. So I'm just going to start outlining all the lines as best I can. starting to come in. It's going to look awesome. And we're even going to add color today. I like things that are colorful. Oh, I think everybody does to a point. You know, actually, I have drawn the chapel before for VU. I did a nice charcoal pencil one. I think and I remember they, seeing that. And they made it into a postcards. And then they were starting to pass them out at the welcome student days. And then, guess what hit? Gee, does it start with a C? <laughs> yep, absolutely. I know COVID's been really hard on small businesses, but it's nice that you're still able to do some lessons virtually for kids. Oh yeah, it's wonderful to have that avenue open to me because people are starting to see the necessity for trying to burn time, encourage creativity, especially with the kids. They, they need it most of all. They're stuck inside and also it's difficult trying to go back to school now and all that. I mean, it's tough. And I think this is like for everybody, it's just difficult to function when you have to be so cautious all the time. I'm gonna make all the windows now. Get them nice and dark. Also stinks because summer was ruined and mm -hmm. spring, don't you think? Yeah, the timing just was. And the weather has been gorgeous. Except today, it's really, really hot. I know, even the tablecloth is sticking to me. And what's your preferred method of drawing? Is it charcoal, ink? 
I like to go from media to media because I feel like if you stay in one medium for too long, then it kind of bores you. And plus, it's also good to have different ways of creating art and all that. It's like don't have just like oil painting or acrylic painting or ink or pencil and all that. Mix it up. Use two together. Like, uh, for example, sometimes I do uh, Sharpie and uh, colored pencil. Or I can do um, mixed media pieces. Like, for example, I'll start with an oil painting and then I'll take some cut up canvas and paste it on top of that. And then also take some old drawings, cut them up, and paste it up on top of that. And I'll come up with an amazing image. That's the whole beauty of studio art. You're always creating and exploring. One of the things that BU helped me to realize was, is you can always get better. Always get better. You're always learning. In fact, Michelangelo quoted himself, well, he said, I am still learning. Very simple, but straightforward. Even when I'm, an, when, even when I'm much, much, much older, I'm going to be learning. And even at my old age, I could be creating a masterpiece. Smart. Looks good, night. Hold on, everybody. You're going to see the outline of the chapel. I have so many erasings that go all over the place. Oh, I'm sure. So far. There it is so far. Looking good. And now I think we're going to add some color. Yeah. So I have like the primary colors just for today. Yellow, red, blue, and green. And I'm going to start coloring in the stained glass window. And because you can't really uh, see too much of it from the photo that we're using, I'm just going to be creative and add little bursts of color here and there, like red and green together, because why not? Make it awesome. And then why not add some blue and yellow? And I'm just kind of creating some little hash lines here and there. Might as well do it on the next room, so it kind of keeps like a pattern. So on the other sides as well, so that way we have the continuity. Do you draw with Sharpies a lot or just write with Sharpies a lot? Just write. I like Sharpies though. I like how crisp they are, especially when they're new. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. It's like, that's my favorite thing. Fresh Sharpies. But then it's like after you use them for a while, I just like, ugh. They get a little dull. Very dull. I have so many Sharpies though. <laughs> so many Sharpies.
colorful as possible. I like it. What do you think? I think it's looking good. <laughs> So we got the stained glass in, and the healthy is like a nice dark, you can get away with black and gray for this building. So I'm going to take pastel chalk, because why not? Let's make this just nice and colorful. And then also it's easy to spread out. And then I'm also going to add it to the windows further up. And let's see, I'm going to add some gray just on the inside. The one thing I really like about art is that you're kind of allowed to be messy, which is, oh, yeah. I'm just naturally that way. So. Oh, believe me, I am so messy. It is just playing with the uh, mediums, exploring. You have to get messy. It means you're having fun, right? Oh, a lot of fun. Oh, and I just found out that the outside of the building is actually an orange color, but that's okay because we can erase pastel chalk. Oh, that's nifty. Yeah, and it still is nifty. So, I get some brick color. Look at that right there. Oh. Magic. And I'm even going to add some to the roof. And then this other roof. And then you can use your fingers to blend. some beige or like a light yellow to the outside building still. Oh, and even the chalk breaks. <laughs> Then I think we're going to add some grass, nice green grass at the bottom. Oh. Green grass. I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. Let's see. And then here's like a sap green. You can just add like little blades of grass right there. Oh, 
helps gives the grass nice texture. like a light bay yellow right underneath the roof just for the hair. And then let's see. Then I have some white chops so that way we can add details and highlights and oh. all that to make this like stand out more. Like the beams for the Helgi center. Let's make that stand out. The roof. Just for fun, right? Yeah. A sun for fun. Well, and in my light, right? Uh, I was about to say <laughs> that. Hopefully everybody will come check out Painted Palette Studio. I'm on Facebook, so it's just Painted Palette Studio. And then also if you want to hire me for caricatures, it's Nate Can Do Caricatures. That's Can Do in parentheses. And hopefully um, I'll be able to create more artwork for VU as long as possible. And whenever they reach out to me, thank you so much.